Water. It's essential for all living things. Some animals can survive longer than others, but ultimately a lack of clean water leads to an early demise. For humans, water is even more important. While we can live a month or more without food, three days is about as long as we can survive without water. Water is life. For life to flourish, the water not only has to be readily available, it also must be clean. The vast majority of the water that um, people receive in the southeast, the 13 southern states, come from forests. About 50% of the water comes from forests. If managed properly, you can continue to have some development, but you want to protect these key forested areas that will protect your water source, which enables all these things to come to the area in the first place. Different industries need clean water. The port needs clean water. The ships can get in and out of the port. You need clean drinking water if you're going to live here. Your schools and whatever need water for the kids to drink at the school. And having water is key for anything that lives. If you're not protecting that resource, you're not going to be able to do any of the other things that we want to do as humans. Clean water happens through a process called filtration, the act of removing solid and unwanted particles from a liquid by the use of a filter medium that allows clean liquid to pass through. Today, basic filtration of our drinking water comes both naturally and artificially. In order for drinking water to be safe, harmful particles, both seen and unseen, must be removed from the source water in order for it to be safe. If water is not filtered naturally first by the forests, then once it enters the treatment facility, it must undergo a much more rigorous filtration and cleaning process, and costs are dramatically increased. I am constantly reminding our customers um, that we have really affordable water. One of the reasons is because we have this amazing forest that cleans our water before it reaches our intake. As forested land gets converted into urban land or agricultural land, um, there are a lot of risks to excess flow of nutrients and sediment and harmful byproducts getting into the water supply. All around the world, and particularly in the southeastern United States, forests in and around watersheds are one of the primary methods for naturally filtering source drinking water. Forests are nature's filter. They are vital and necessary, and they are at risk. You're putting in impervious surfaces with paved roads, rooftops, sidewalks, drainage systems like storm drains that, that vastly carry huge amounts of water that run off these impervious surfaces. And they're all, they all wind up in this river. You, you may not realize it, but in a development, if you live in a subdivision and you see a storm drain, the water that runs off your rooftop, onto your lawn, onto the street, goes in the storm drain and winds up in another creek or directly in the bigger rivers, but it all leads to one spot. So if you've got development causing more runoff in the first place because you don't have the tree cover, you don't get the infiltration of the water into the ground to filter it, you also aren't regulating the flow so you have more chance for flooding episodes because there's a higher sudden flashy runoff. And then you add in the people that are there that are adding all the pollutants as well, cars and trucks. They put herbicides for their lawns. So everything you put on your lawn winds up in that storm drain and winds up in the stream too. So if that stuff's not done properly, then you can wind up with a whole lot more of an issue for water quality from those land uses over and above forests. Forests are the least of the disturbance levels and the best land use if you're trying to protect water. But something can be done and is being done. Local communities are realizing the value in conservation management and restoration of upstream forest land to increase and enhance the ecosystem services provided by forests for downstream users now and in the future. I think that one of the challenges that we have as a, as a region, like a lot of regions around the country, is really balancing that economic development and growth with protecting the natural resource. And that's what we're really trying to do here with these conservation easements 
and protecting that source is to allow the region to grow, but also take the time and the money to invest in the natural resources that long term are going to protect that water source. I think we need permanent conservation easements, and some landowners are interested in that. And then I think we need more short term agreements uh, that are suitable for, for other types of landowners. Some landowners uh, want to be able to divide their land up for their children, and they may not know how many children they will have. Um, they may not know if they're going to add on to that property. Also, when you're looking at protecting something in perpetuity, the dollar amount may be larger. You have to purchase this bundle of rights from the landowner, but when you're thinking about shorter term agreements, uh, it may be more affordable for the utilities or for your funders. Uh, to be able to purchase short-term short, short -term agreements. I think we need some uh, built-in flexibility um, and, and we need all of these tools at our disposal. Municipalities, private landowners, and business partners are working together in creative ways to keep our drinking water as clean as possible right at the source. This collaboration can be seen in the southeastern Savannah River Basin where the Savannah River Clean Water Fund has been created as a means to help keep forests on the riverbanks healthy and plentiful in order to naturally filter out contaminants in the river. The Clean Water Fund is a creative way to put nature to work to protect drinking water through land conservation projects, forest restoration projects. It's nature-based solutions to cleaning water. The Savannah River Clean Water Fund is such an important program for Savannah because we come together, it's a, it's a collaboration of a wide variety of partners that their goals and mission may be different, but the common ground that we have is that we need to protect water quality. And so we come together, we, we plan it out, we decide which properties and which tributaries of the river have the highest impact on water quality and we make plans and find funds to secure those. One way that we all kind of figure out how we're going to work together is that we have a prioritization tool or a priority map and we're actually working on the second version of that. A lot of conservation maps focus on conservation values, but our map was unique in, in that it was the first to really incorporate source water protection or, or drinking water quality into the, the conservation map. We helped to prioritize all the, the parcels that were the most important to protecting water quality in the river brought that into a software called the Geographic Information System, or a GIS, and look at where these areas overlap, where they're near each other. We can essentially ask this computer software all sorts of questions about what exists on the landscape, and we can also look at what we might expect um, and how that affects our decision making going forward. It's a tremendous uh, group of people coming together, uh, recognizing the values that forests provide uh, when you start talking about clean water. The water that's coming from forests and flowing down into Savannah River is really important uh, to the citizens that live along the Savannah River. 91% of the citizens uh, get at least some of their drinking water from forests. Having a healthy ecosystem and a health, healthy forest along the Savannah River, there's no better land use that can be in a river watershed that protects and provides clean water. When it comes to water quality, it's not necessarily the size of the property, but really where it's situated in the landscape. Josh Bell and Lisa Lord were instrumental in securing conservation for both the Big Snooks and the Meyer Lake tracts of land which although smaller in size than other conserved lands in the area, help complete a much larger contiguous area of forested watershed. The Meyer Lake Tracks, 974 acres, located along the Savannah River, also in Jasper County. It has three and a half miles of direct Savannah River frontage. It's got about 680 or so acres of bottomland hardwood swamp uh, with the remaining in, in good upland. Uh, mixed pine hardwood habitat. It's also part of a 38,000 acre corridor of protected lands 
Uh, it's the southernmost unprotected floodplain forest in South Carolina, but also it was in close proximity to the two drinking water utilities intake. So actually we had two utilities uh, participate in this deal. So the ultimate goal for the Clean Water Fund is to keep about 60% of the basin in some sort of natural cover, uh, mostly forested cover, and right now we're at about 77%. One of these newly identified tracts of land ideal for conservation is the Groton Plantation. It sits alongside 20 miles of the Savannah River on the South Carolina side and has been essential in connecting a massive corridor of forest land that helps provide clean water in the area and downstream. We're here at Groton Plantation in Allendale and Hampton Counties in South Carolina. Groton is close to 23,000 acres it fronts the Savannah River for over 20 miles. It has everything from upland pine savannas to bottomland hardwood swamps, uh, open fields and meadows, ponds, creeks. It's really got it all. If you looked at all the protected land in this neighborhood of all the conservation easements, uh, South Carolina DNR, there was a big hole that connected a lot of this, and that was this property. And so the conservation of this property actually connected 130,000 acres of protected land. The Groton Plantation property is upstream of our intake here at the Perrysburg plant, which is very important because that's going to protect those waters before they reach the intake here. Groton is 22,000 acres. The watershed that filters through Groton is much larger than that. Anytime you have an easement on the river, you're cleaning up more than just the size of the easement. Most of the water that comes through Groton flows into the Clearwater stream and out into the Savannah River. So Groton is cleaning up water from the areas around it, from on Groton, and even from the river at times when part of the river flows through Groton Swamp. This river is, you know, the, the end point for a whole drainage system. So all the little feeder creeks and streams that come into this, this whole watershed wind up in the savannah. So the areas that protect the savannah itself and those other streams keep those pollutants like sediment or chemicals or anything like that out of the Savannah River, which also happens to be a source of drinking water for some communities along this river as well. So the City of Savannah Water Resources Division is a regional water provider. We provide water to the City of Savannah and municipalities in Chatham County and in Effingham County. We have two sources of water. One is the Florida Aquifer. We have about 50 wells. We also have surface water. Our surface water intake is at Abercorn Creek, which is a tributary of the Savannah River. The Savannah River watershed is still, I think, 76% forested. And that is critically important because watersheds that are less than 60%, you start to see a change in the water quality, which makes our job harder. And it also makes our water more expensive. When pollutants aren't kept out of source bodies of water, then the water must be treated more heavily at water treatment facilities. The Buford Jasper Water and Sewer Authority provides water and wastewater services to more than 60,000 retail customers in Buford and Jasper counties, as well as seven wholesale customers. Here today, we're at the Perrysburg Water Treatment Plant, which sits on the Savannah River. Our intake comes in and provides water to this facility. We also have an 18-mile canal where the water travels from the Savannah River to our Chelsea Water Treatment Plant, where they produce water as well. During the cooler, wetter parts of the year, we produce about 20 million gallons per day. As the weather warms up, we typically, our demand is about in the high 20s to low 30 million gallons per day. All right, this is the start of our treatment process. This is chemical injection in our rapid mix. This is where we start treating the water that comes from the Savannah River or, or our reservoir. We have the ability to take from either one. We have four stage flocculation. This is just so particles start coming together and settling out. Particles will really start forming. You can start seeing the flock in that fourth basin and then they'll settle out in our settling basins before we filter what tends to be pretty clean water. One of our goals is to provide the highest quality drinking water that we can to our residents and customers and do it at the most affordable price. We need the forest to be able to provide that natural filter that can protect the source. The more contaminated the source, the harder it is to treat as well as the more costly. 
The better the source water, obviously, it's going to cut costs significantly. Much less chemicals do that need to be used, and those cost savings we could also put back onto our customers. Not only is clean water needed for drinking, but also for many other products we use on a daily basis. Paper products are used in many areas of consumer production, from the obvious paper-based products that we use every day, down to even the tiniest components in your cell phone. International Paper on the Savannah River relies on clean water to keep costs down in making their paper products. I work in our environmental department where we keep um, all of our mill operations within our permit compliance as well as try to reduce our impact on the natural environment. Vision 2030 is the next set of goals that's going to run our company's sustainability goals for the next 10 years. It covers a wide range um, of sustainability goals, starting with community, diversity and inclusion, and as well as the natural environment. So our, one of our Vision 2030 goals is to reduce our fleet's water use by 25% as a whole. Um, so this Savannah River project is one of those the pieces of the puzzle that fits into um, the Vision 2030 goals. Sustainable forests as well as sustainable source of water um, are key to us keeping our operations running, being able to provide the um, products that customers rely on on a daily basis. If clean water is essential for keeping us healthy and producing the products we use every day, how do we protect these forests that keep the water clean? Projects like the Savannah River Clean Water Fund attempt to solve this issue. The Clean Water Fund, I think that's our, our ultimate goal, is having sustained funding. Initially, when the fund started up in 2014, we were working with the drinking water utilities as kind of the, the, the key stakeholder that depends on water quality. What we are now starting to uh, focus on is bringing in those corporate partners, dischargers, key partners like International Paper, who's recently come in as, as a partner but has infused so much energy into, into the fund. And so I think having uh, more partners at the table um, can, can only mean good things for creating a sustained funding source. And it's about investing in green infrastructure. It's sometimes you gotta build new treatment plants, but what we're doing is preventing future problems. Uh, and there's not a lot of problems in Savannah because a lot of it is forested, and so we're able to protect forests to prevent those future problems. This sort of decision-making approach really is uh, acknowledging that there are limited conservation resources and capacity to do this kind of work. We can't conserve it all, and so we need to focus on the places that matter the most to people and that can have the greatest impact. In order to be successful, creative solutions are needed to make the forests and water connection with the downstream investors, municipalities, land trusts, and conservancies all the way down to the utility consumers. Everyone can play a part. In conservation arena, you, you know, partnerships are huge, it's critical. You've got to pull multiple parties together to be able to have impacts at a large scale. Uh, so one of the things Georgia and, and South Carolina has been doing together uh, is, is pulling together partners, convening partners to look at the benefits that water play and the benefits that forests play in creating high quality, clean water, stable water sources. A really fruitful intersection between technology and the social sciences, and we can bring a lot of information to bear um, in a way that recognizes all of the perspectives uh, that are at the table. People that don't own forest land, you know, they're all voters. Uh, and so the vast majority of the voting blocks now live in these urban centers, and so we've got to get to them and help them understand the values of working forests and clear up some uh, long-term misconceptions that are out there. The use of forest and, and harvesting uh, forest and utilizing the wood is not a negative thing, it's a positive thing. And it helps keep our forest healthy long-term and those healthy forests are just so important to, to water quality. Forests are nature's water filter. They, they work 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. They never quit. You know, this property is massive, borders the Savannah River for 23 miles, and it's just a filter. And it not only filters the water flowing off this property, but it filters all the water flowing through this property. It's a tremendous uh, benefit to the drinking water. Well, the future of your water supply is heavily dependent on the natural infrastructure that is here. These forests operate as a natural way of treating your water. You can do it artificially in a treatment plant, but there's a cost to that. And 
This is doing it already for you and it also has the added bonuses of providing jobs for forestry, forest products, it provides recreation, aesthetics, and just natural beauty and a place for people to enjoy. So you get all those additive effects that a treatment plant doesn't do for you. So I'm a, a wildlife biologist and a mom and I'm passionate about natural ecosystems. I think uh, the, the special places in our states are part of our culture and our heritage and we want to make sure that we preserve those places for, for people and for, for wildlife. Um, I, I want you know all of these places here and for, for my children to be able to, to appreciate and see. Keeping forests as forests is a vital step in maintaining a natural water infrastructure system. In doing so, we can help maintain and restore the nation's largest water utility. Nationwide, forests cover about 750 million acres and provide drinking water for 40% of municipalities. This provides drinking water for 180 million citizens across America, as well as providing many other natural and biological benefits. The goal is simple, keep forests as forests well-managed, maintained and protected, and let them do the job they were designed to do. No matter where you are, a watershed is a watershed, and it knows no boundaries. It doesn't know political boundaries. It doesn't know municipal boundaries. Water goes where it wants to go. And we need that collaboration. We need that holistic partnership throughout the watershed to make this happen.